What is up guys, Paradoxio here. Welcome back to a brand new video, everybody. Today we are going to be diving into the basics of Tkinter in Python. Now, if you don't know what Tkinter is or not even heard of it, Tkinter is a pre-installed Python library, meaning you do not need to pip install. It already comes with Python upon installation. And uh, basically what we can do with Tkinter is make graphical user interfaces. Um, things we can do with Tkinter, for example, are making a calculator app or uh, making an MP3 player or a media playing software for images and videos and much more. Anything that is a UI or a GUI, you can uh, make with Tkinter. Uh, for an example, uh, we could make a text editor like Visual Studio's code in Tkinter if we wanted to. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. Now we have messed with Tkinter on my channel before. Uh, if you have watched my uh, tutorial video for making a calculator, we use Tkinter to do that. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, it would be a good video to watch after this one. If you have already watched it, then this video would be a cakewalk for you. But anyways, to get started, uh, we just need to import Tkinter. Now, since it is pre-installed, we do not need to worry about opening up our command prompt and pip installing it. So we can just go ahead and type in import Tkinter. Now, uh, me personally, what I like to do is instead of writing this, I like to just type in from to Kinter since it's already installed, and then just type in import all using the asterisk symbol. Um, of course, you can just use import to Kinter, uh, whatever works for you. I just like doing it like this. Now, uh, to actually make our graphical user interface, we need to create a TK object by declaring a variable for it. And uh, we can call this whatever we want. Uh, we can call it main underscore GUI. And then we just need to set it equal to the TK class. So what we have did is we made a TK object. And uh, to actually get it to show up on our screen, we need to type in main GUI dot main loop, just like that. And if we go ahead and run this, as you can see, we already have a small little window here. We can resize it left and right and up and down. We can maximize it. We can uh, minimize it and we can take it off the screen. And we can also hit the X button. And uh, yeah, so that is basically our uh, blank slate that uh, we are already given just with these three lines of code. Now, an important thing to mention is for all of our code that we're going to be writing inside this uh, program here needs to be between our um, TK declaration and our main loop function. We need to make sure all of our code that is meant to be written within the program is in between those two lines. Because if you write anything after our uh, dot main loop callback, um, basically none of that stuff will be on your um, GUI. So a good thing to uh, keep in mind is all of that needs to be in between these two lines here. But anyways, let's go ahead and give our GUI a title. Now let's do that. All we need to do is just type in the name of our object, which mine is main underscore GUI. And then we just need to type in dot title and it's gonna take in a string and we can call it my first GUI. And if we go ahead and run this, as you can see, uh, it does show up, although since it's so small, we can't really see it, but now we can. We have our title. Now, um, we need to fix the fact that it is a small uh, GUI. Now, of course, you can just resize it. However, that can get annoying. Or you may just want it to be a defined uh, dimension, so that way the resolution can uh, stay as however you want it. To do that, all we need to do is just type in uh, main underscore GUI dot geometry. And uh, like our title, it is going to take in a string as a parameter. And to define our dimensions, we just need to type in a number, x, and then another number for width and height. So I'm going to make mine 600 by, mm, let's do 400 as a height. So um, we already uh, basically gave us the uh, defined dimensions. 
Now let's make it to where it can stay as those dimensions and it can't be um, resized anymore. To do that, we just need to type in main GUI dot resizable and it's going to take in width and height as booleans, uh, true or false. So we're going to type in width and we're gonna set it equal to false, so that way they cannot resize it to left and right. And then height is also going to be false, so that way we can't resize it up and down. Excuse me. So uh, with that being said, if we go ahead and run our program here, as you can see, we get our 600 by 400 uh, dimension. We have our title that we can read now. And we can't resize it. And we also can't maximize it anymore. We can only just send it to our taskbar here. So let's go ahead and exit this out. And let's go ahead and add some stuff to our um, GUI here. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to add a label and some buttons. Now, uh, a thing you might want to do is to change the color of the background because as you know, it is white and white is probably a color that you don't want to be looking at on a computer screen for a long time it can damage your eyes i have to wear a special type of glasses that protects my eyes from it because uv light is bad for you but anyways uh to change the color what we can do is we can just go ahead and type in main gui dot configure and inside here, we can type in background equals. It's going to take in a string, and then we can we can just type in the name of our background. Mm, I'm going to make this one light blue. Now, uh, I believe you can use HTML colors or hex codes. However, I am not 100% sure about that. So, if you'd want to try it yourself and see if it works, feel free. However, I, again, I'm not 100% sure. I just like to use uh, the words here. Um, you can use a bunch of colors like green, red, I think black even, but I don't know why you'd want to use black. Uh, it's not really a color you would use for GUI. Um, you can use blue, light blue, there's also I believe light green even. I'm not sure. There's pink, there's all kinds of colors you can use. But uh, if we go ahead and run this one more time, as you can see, our background is a nice light baby blue color. Now let's go ahead and add some stuff to our uh, GUI. So let's say we want to paste some text to our uh, GUI here. What we can do is uh, we can create a thing called a label or a label object. To do that, we just need to create a variable here or declare it, I should say, and we can just call it my label. And uh, we can set it equal to the label object. And inside here, the first thing we want to pass in, and this is for all widgets and objects that you're adding to your GUI, the first thing you want to pass in is your TK object. So for me, it would be main GUI. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, anyways, that is the first thing you always want to add or uh, pass in through the parameters. After that, we can go ahead and start filling in for the rest of the stuff for our widgets. Um, these are uh, basically all called widgets, by the way, in uh, T. Kinter's definition. Uh, they're really just Python objects, but um, when we're messing with T. Kinter, we just call them widgets. So uh, inside your widget, after you pass in your TK object, we then want to go ahead and pass in uh, whatever we need to for that widget. So since this is a text or label, we want to go ahead and pass in text. And uh, this text, uh, we can just make it hello world. And uh, after that, we can also give it a font. Now the thing with the font is it's going to take a tuple. Now if you don't know what a tuple is, a tuple is a Python data type that allows us to have more than uh, well, it can have it can allow us to have two or more uh, data or pieces of data for our um, font here, or for anything really. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the name of our font, comma, then the uh, size in pixels. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a font called Unispace. Uh, I believe this is a custom installed font I have. I don't know. I can't really remember. But uh, you can use custom installed fonts. Um, what this does is if you're on Windows, it just looks in your Windows um, 
fonts folder or uh, yeah I think it's what it's called a fonts folder or wherever your fonts are stored it'll just look in there now for Mac I'm not sure how that works although as far as I'm concerned it's pretty much the same way just for Mac computers but anyways, after that, we want to type in a comma still inside this tupa, by the way. And we want to go ahead and put the size in pixels uh, as a integer. So uh, a typical size is usually 8-bit. So we could use 32 pixels, 64, or if you want to do it real small, you can use 16 or 24. But we are going to use 32 because that is the most common size and it's easy to read. So after that, what we can do, we can also give it some padding to allow it to have some space in between other widgets and uh, the text widget, or the label widget, I should say. So uh, we're going to give it some pad Y of 10 pixels and padding X of 10 pixels. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and paste it by typing in my label dot pack. Now let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Now, as you can see, we have our label widget that says hello world. Now, uh, one thing that you definitely would have noticed is this has a white border. Uh, we do not want that, or uh, most of us probably don't want that. Doesn't really look nice since we have a background. Well, that's easy to fix. Like we did with our uh, main GUI here, we can also type in my label.configure. And inside here, we can use background, and we can set it equal to the same color as our uh, GUI's background. So if we go ahead and rerun this, as you can see, they match. And that looks a bit better. Now, uh, another thing worth mentioning is you can use the configure uh, method for every single widget that is in Tkinter. Or at least as far as I know, you can use it with every single widget in Tkinter. Um, there will always be a configure method, and what you can do is you can change the background, and I think a few other things, but I haven't really looked into it. Uh, it's most commonly used for background, though. So uh, do keep that in mind if you ever uh, have some errors with uh, how your background matches uh, with your other backgrounds. Just know you can change it with the configure method. Now let's go ahead and make a button. So to make a button, uh, all you need to do is just declare a variable and set it equal to a button object. So we're going to call this my button. We're going to set it equal to the button class. Now, like the label and like any other widget, sorry, we need to pass in our uh, main GUI's object or our TK object. So that will always be the first thing you pass in. And then we can pass in a text for the button. And we're just going to make it say click me. I believe you can give it a font. Yep. Uh, however, I'm not really going to worry about giving us a font. Uh, but you can. Um, now we can also give it some padding. So I'm going to make it be a pad X of 10 and a pad Y of 10. Now uh, you can do this. This is supported in buttons. But an alternative and uh, in my uh, personal opinion, a better way of doing this is using width and height. Now if I go ahead and just type in my uh, button dot pack and I were to go ahead and uh, show it. As you can see, we do have that padding of 10 pixels here and in 10 pixels here because both of these have padding. Now, obviously the button doesn't do anything because we haven't gave it any functionality yet but uh, we can use padding. However, a better alternative is to use width and height because uh, basically how the padding works is for buttons, uh, the padding starts at the edge of the button to the edge of the text from left, right, up and down or top to bottom. So uh, depending on how long your text is, uh, that can vary. Now let's go ahead and uh, use width and height instead. Now, um, my personal, uh, for buttons like that, my personal uh, recommendation is use a width of 12 and a height of 3. Now, uh, we need to actually add a command to our button. So I'm just going to set it to none right now. And I'm going to go ahead and make my function up here that I want this button to call upon being clicked. 
So I'm gonna call this def my function, or uh, it's actually called my function, sorry. And uh, inside here, I'm actually going to make it paste another label. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of this here, and I'm going to paste it inside this function here, or this method. And I'm going to just change this here to something a little cheesy. And I'm going to leave the font the same, and padding the same, and uh, background the same. Obviously, I'm going to want to change uh, these uh, variables here, because we already have it defined up here. So that's just going to be my label too. And uh, yeah. Now if I go ahead and uh, run this, and I click this button. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, that's right. I need to actually set the command equal to that function. So to do that, we just type in my function. You don't need to call it unless you're passing in parameters, which by the way, if you are passing in parameters, then what you need to do is type in lambda colon my function, and then you call it with the parentheses, and then you can pass in whatever you need to pass in to your parameters. However, um, if yours does not require any uh, arguments, you can just leave it like that. Now, if I go ahead and run this, as you can see, if I click click me, it says subscribe to Paradoxio. I should probably make that a little smaller, but um, you should do that, by the way. Helps me out a lot. But anyways, uh, let's actually change this a bit. Let's make it 24. There we go. Now, uh, that's how we make a button, that's how we set a command to it. Uh, let's make another button, just for, um, why not? So, I'm gonna call this, uh, exit button. And what it's gonna do is exactly what it name says it's gonna do. It's going to exit. And, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this equal to exit, and I'm gonna create another function called exit like that and to actually make it exit we are going to uh, just basically type in main gui dot destroy and uh, what this does is when this function is uh, called it'll just kill the program or close out the gui it's basically the same as hitting the x button or killing the program via the uh, terminal or um, your code interpreter so uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, try this out. Now, if I go ahead and run, you know, click this, it says subscribe to Paradoxio, and if I click this exit button, it closes the GUI. Now, uh, let's add some colors to our button because they're just white. We want them to be nice little colors. So uh, to do that, we can just type in my button, dots configure, not config, but configure. And in background, we can set it to something like green for the click me button. And for this one, since it's exit, let's make it a red button. So exit button dot configure background is going to be red. Now, if I go ahead and run this one more time, as you can see, our buttons have a um, nice little color. Now, um, of course, we should probably uh, change the font colors. Uh, however, I'm gonna let you figure that out yourself because I covered quite a bit in this video for basics. I will make a follow-up video in the future of a little more uh, complex uh, program with Tkinter. Um, now, if you haven't seen my calculator tutorial, you should definitely check that out after finishing this video. But uh, yeah. So that is pretty much it for this video. If we go ahead and just click, click me, um, it'll tell you what to do. And then we can go ahead and just exit by clicking the exit button. So, so far we have a nice little GUI with some colors, that's some text and two buttons. And it's all done in just 30 lines of code if you wanna include these spaces for organization. So uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment down below telling me what you would like to see next. 
If you have any problems with your code or you just simply want to hang out with me and over 400 other people, be sure to join my Discord server. We are constantly helping out people. We have very we have a very huge amounts of forums for people to look at and even open up their own if they have any questions. So, if you're ever stuck, be sure to join my Discord server. We would be happy to have you and help you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.